What's going on everyone, Austin John Place here, and today we're going to be getting the Ember Armor in Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. This is one of the brand new armor sets introduced with this game that was not available in Breath of the Wild, and it has a brand new type of bonus and a brand new type of set bonus, and I'm going to be covering the locations and all that information and the materials to upgrade in this video. If you already did the quest line for the Fierce Deity armor without the amiibo in Tears of the Kingdom, then you made your way to the Kisanoa Shrine, Wind Power, which is right above the Foothill Stable, and then you went into this cave over here, the Cephalo Lake Cave. You'd be seeing two treasures treasure hunters outside and they're going to be going off about oh Misko's treasure is inside of here and one of these treasure chests is going to be containing some of his treasure. They're going to say you have to have a nose like a dog in order to find out which treasure chest it is so there's a Hylian Treaver outside either bribe him with some nice delicious meat or apples or just watch this video that you're currently watching to look at the one that I'm going to pick up save five meat and boom there you go. Now this is going to be the Ember Trousers which give you hot weather attack but we'll go more over exactly exactly how the armor works in a little bit. Time for our second piece of the armor, which is gonna bring us here to the Death Mountain Elden area. And you will have had to s at least start the Unobo quest line in order to get this next piece of armor because there's going to be one of those big red rocks that's going to be in the way of the Unobo Co. HQ South Cave. So once we go ahead and make our way on over, you're going to see a woman and a bokoblin fighting over there. And you may also see a blurpy outside, but none of that really matters as long as you go ahead and clear the rocks from this entranceway. You're also going to be seeing one of Misko's banners. That's how you know you're going the right place. When you enter here, you're going to be in unbearable heat and you're going to need to immediately put on at least one level of flame breaker armor. Make sure you don't have any wooden weapons or anything else equipped. There's going to be some horriblins on the ceiling. Feel free to take care of them however you'd like. My new favorite thing is just rocket shield to the face. Yep. Enjoy your nice swim in lava. And if you look straight ahead, boom, there it is. From here, you have a couple of options on how to get over there. One is going to be some really precise jumping and flying. However, down here, you're going to be finding all the materials for an ATV. I was already here because I needed the booble frog. There's a chance that there's a rock in the way. If so, just destroy the rock that's in the way. Alternatively, if you want to grab the fire hydrant or a fan or whatever you want, any opportunity that I have that I can use an ATV to get someplace, I'm going to. This first wheel is just slightly too far ahead. That's the reason it didn't crawl up here. But trust me, it totally can crawl up here. I've done it before. Oh yeah, this is not level at all. Okay. Now via your preferred transportation method, all we need to do is make our way to the other side of this lava river. Hop on out, and here's going to be an altar for us, containing the Ember Headdress. Our third piece of Ember Armor is going to make our way from Goron City just down the road a little bit, and over here is going to be the Goronabi River Cave. This is the location we need to make our way to. If you haven't made a sled shield already, I don't know how you're playing this game, other than wrong. Making my way over to the entrance cave, there's going to be some monsters outside I'm not too concerned with, and we're going to be seeing another one of Misko's banners as we make our way inside. You are going to need fireproof level one in order to survive in here, or of course, or side on, or however you want to make your way through. Completely up to you. I'm not here to tell you how to play the game, as long as you made a sled shield. I love that. Inside of here is going to be a lava river. We are going to need to cross it and make our way over to the right and up the ascending area. Or Tullin can just make a gust and we just do that. Making our way to the next area, there's going to be some rocks on the floor. A few of them are going to be coming out very, very slowly, but as they do, you're going to go ahead and make yourself a bridge or Tullin can help us out. Thank you. There's a like like on the wall you may have to deal with. Now those rocks that I went ahead and neglected before, we are most likely going to need them. I mean, Tullin might be able to cross that. Essentially, what you want to do is grab a bunch of these rocks, stick them together. And then once you stick them together, you're going to be able to make your way across. You know what, Tullin? I believe in you, buddy. Wow. Okay, didn't think he could do that, but that was fantastic. As we make our way on over, you're going to be seeing this pedestal up here. Let's go ahead and ascend. And here's going to be the altar that we need. And inside of this chest, we are going to be finding Misko's treasure number three, the Ember Shirt. 
After here, a door is going to be opening up that's going to be leading you to another set of treasure with three very fun riddles. I am immediately going to be putting out a video based on that. But if you want to go ahead and try to do those riddles yourself, go for it. I know at least one of them is really fun. One of them is really tricky. All right, so first things first, let's go ahead and talk about what the Ember outfit and hot attack up actually mean and do. If you look at my temperature meter over at the bottom right, right now it's sort of uncomfortably hot, but it's not unbearably hot. Now, if you were to go and make your way to a place that's unbearably hot, meaning that the little cursor is going to be all the way to the right around three o'clock. Currently, right now, it is 48 degrees Celsius. If you were to then do a combo attack, you would then produce fire while you do the combo. This armor does not actually help you against being too hot. So you would have to equip then either an ice weapon or an ice shield. However, you could still do your attack. So if I were to come over here to these Gibdo, who are weak to elemental damage, there's also this Choo Choo I'm probably going to accidentally hit. After I do my combo, you're gonna see that I then kick out all of that fire in a big circle around me. Alternatively, you could decide to do a charge attack, which will then send out a big old burst of fire, which is pretty handy if you're being ganged up by a bunch of enemies who are weak to fire damage. So anytime that you want, you have a weapon. Oh, now it's the afternoon, so now it's not hot enough, so now I can't do the attack. This also extends to any point that you're going to be in literally combustion heat, like any time that it's going to say error at the bottom right. If you were to go ahead and then do a combo attack, you would then produce the fire. How many pieces of this armor you have on dictates how wide of a circle you're going to be making with your ember attack. Three, two, and one. So if you find yourself in an environment that you just need one level of flame guard, like down here, you can go ahead, put one piece of flame breaker on, and then feel free to equip two pieces of ember armor. Then you're gonna be having a level two fire circle around you. Or if you've already done Sidon's quest, Sidon can surround you in water for 10 seconds, which then keeps you wet for 10 seconds, and you don't get any of that fire damage. You can then walk around, and now you're gonna be seeing the steam coming off a of link, letting you know that he is currently hydrated, a very important thing to be. And feel free to do this attack as much as you would like. Also, if you want, you could do the circular spin attack instead of having to hold down the charge attack which also works for heavy weapons and of course spears. This does mean that you can put yourself in a situation that you can have an ice attack followed by a fire attack or electric or water or whatever other elements that you wanna combine with this. It's just always going to be a fire attack at the end. Now let's go ahead and talk upgrades. Level one, you're only gonna be needing three fire fruit, extremely affordable. Level two, you're gonna be needing five fire breath Lizolfo horns and five summer wing butterflies. Excuse me a moment while I go find some butterflies. While I was going around and looking for summer wing butterflies, I decided to check some beetle locations and I found three over here at the snowfield stable and also at the Tabantha stable. Uh, he also has winter wing butterflies in case you need those. In fact, he has all three butterflies here. I also know that you can find a whole bunch of the summer wing and winter wing butterflies at the Lake of the Horse God. And that was plenty. Perfect. Once you have all three pieces upgraded to star level two, you're going to be getting the set bonus hot weather charge and hot weather attack kind of acts the opposite of level two set bonus on the attack armors like the fierce deity and the barbarian armor that it reduces the stamina drain. Instead, in warm weather environments, it actually makes your stamina meter drain faster. And the whole point of that is that way you can go ahead and get your charge attack out immediately. How quickly that's able to come on out is so fast compared to when you don't have that bonus. It's probably either one and a half times the speed or two times the speed. I would have to go back frame by frame and count that if editing Austin wants to do that for me. If not, that's okay. I know I've been asking a lot of him recently. So I measured from the first appearance of the temporary circle of stamina appearing to the end of the charge sound, letting me know that the Master Sword Charge 1 is going to be ready. And without the bonus, we were measuring at 29 frames. And with the bonus, we were measuring at 15 frames. So room for human error, let's just say it's about twice as fast.
For level three, you're gonna need five fire like stones, five warm darners, and five large zoni charges. Mm. And then the final level, level four, is gonna require five gliok flame horns, ten sizzle fin trout, and ten more large zoni charges. So this is designed to be like kind of an end game armor. And if you were to take this and level this up at the same time, then you're leveling up. Uh, the, the frost version of this, it's going to be easier for you to go ahead and take out those two opposing Gliocks. Now, as you could probably see on screen, the fully upgraded armor has a defense of 16, which is very bad. That's pretty bad for a combat armor. Granted, you know, it's only four points less per piece than the Barbarian and Fierce Deity armor, but this is specifically an attacking armor. This isn't a utility set like the Froggy armor or something else like that. Heck, this is the same defense that level four stealth armor is. This fully upgrade is gonna be giving you a defense equivalent to 12 hearts of defense, which isn't a lot as opposed to armor like the Barbarian that give you 15 hearts of defense and some of the best armor in the game being the Zonite armor that gives you 21 hearts of defense. So yeah, it's it's definitely on the lower end. It's just barely above the Yiga. <laughs> It's up to you if you want to go ahead and upgrade this to level four or definitely set this on the back burner, especially that you're going to be needing 30 sizzle fin trout. Maybe kind of a tall order to ask until you're in that that farming, grinding, late post-game stage of gameplay. Well, anyways, guys, there you go. That's how you're going to be getting the Ember Armor in Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom and the brand new ability, which is Flame Attack Up. If you found this video helpful, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button down below. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, turn on notifications. Until next time, Austin John out. I just noticed that the horns on it are kind of like Dinrols. That makes sense. Okay, bye.